Good morning, Facebook Live. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. I pray you had an amazing Yom Kippur and the Holy Spirit blessed you. Amen. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. We are in a week that is detoxing. Amen. I asked the Lord what to share with you today, and he said, Robin, I want you to share about detox. Woo! And we're detoxing of just harmful things of the tree of the nausea, good and evil, through the words and behaviors of others that have affected us. That's what God's going to bring strength in. Hey, Sherry said of Margaret Holt. And I see, oh, J June, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. And so, you know, I can only give out what I've been going through, right? And so, God is uh, bringing us strength and revelation. So, y'all get strength and revelation from me, from my <laughs> trials. And I think about First Peter 1, 6, and 7, be exceedingly glad. Be exceedingly glad when you experience fiery trials and tribulations and suffer temptations that the testing of your faith, which is more precious than gold, will down to your praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Hey, Barbara. And so today it is about detoxing. And so, you know, I had not realized issues that had been going on or I had, they just didn't click, okay? And just like some people on this patch, just like I did glutathione, and glutathione is the master detoxer. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Linda. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. So, glutathione is a master detoxer. And oh my goodness, when I did that glutathione patch, like I mentioned a week ago, I had some headaches and some detox symptoms. And so, as I left the apartment today, and oh, let me just give a shout out to the land management team. They dealt with the banging on the wall. And ooh, I feel the anointing on that. And Holy Spirit is gonna bring that in today. Oh my goodness. Y'all excuse me while I'm having church with Jesus. Woo, God is talking to me. He's, you don't realize that when I'm on these Facebook Lives, when I preach, hey Lottie, love you. Hey Amy, love you. When I preach, treach, which I might be preaching in Texas before the year is out. We'll see. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. When I treach, preach, when I'm on walking with wisdom, Holy Spirit is talking with me from the Father and giving the Father's message. Remember John 16, 13, Holy Spirit does not speak his own message. He only speaks the message of the Father. And it always testifies to Jesus Christ. And listen, we've got a new neighbor. There's two guys that live next to us. One of the guys that is bed, whose wall is to our bedroom, he moved out. And when he first moved in, like I mentioned about a year ago, he had massive loud music and it woke us up in the middle of the night. That got dealt with. Well, this new young guy, okay, they're party animals is all I can think. There has been banging, banging. The wall shaking, our mirror shaking, the table shaking from the banging, the wall moving. And, you know, uh, as I have written in my books, the wall always represents the soul where God says, your walls are before me, O Jerusalem. And so the wall represents the soul. And you see that in Song of Solomon with the Shulamite. She's on the wall and the wall represents the soul and the watchman over the soul which is the awareness of Holy Spirit in you over your own members. And so it took the banging on the wall for me to contact the land management. And it was the second time. And oh my goodness, it was a to-do. 2, 16 a.m. in the morning, going into Monday. Oh my goodness, Rich had a fit to be tied. Oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. And yesterday, they came through and they dealt with the issue <laughs> and we finally slept all night. But let me tell you what, sometimes you are clueless. Oh my goodness, y'all. I feel the anointing and I cannot tell you how much freedom I've had over the last almost month as Holy Spirit 
allowed me to hear the banging on my wall that I had tolerated. And I didn't tolerate it over two decades ago. <clears throat> I just didn't. And I just separated myself from people that had not good intentions for me. And so, at any rate, without my <laughs> conscious mind, okay, being able to comprehend, I succumbed and tolerated <clears throat> people saying things to my face indirectly about me. I don't know if you've ever experienced that where people are talking about those people, someone else, but they're really talking about you. And every time I would leave from having fellowship, Holy Spirit would say, they were talking about you. They were talking about you. They were talking about you. And you know what? I just kind of, you know, not really overlooked it per se. I was kind of hypnotized. And I talk about hypnosis in Mindfulness Mount of Christ in relation to strongholds. And hypnosis is the power of suggestion. And your strongholds are the power of suggestion where you're hypnotized under a false reality. And so, you know, I try to be respectful. I try to be one that honors other people. And so, I'd been taking these conversations with me and other in the midst of other people <clears throat> that were indirectly about me and just negative, negative, negative about how they see me. And, you know, it took <clears throat> vexation. There's that motorcycle again. Isn't that crazy? There's that motorcycle again. See how loud that motorcycle is? And I'm talking about the banging on the wall for the second day in a row. And that motorcycle comes by the second day in a row. Is that not crazy? And y'all, there is a noise that God is causing your ears to be open to. That you're asleep to and you're tolerating it. And it is having an effect on you and how you see yourself. And so God showed me how I succumbed and was placating to other people's opinions about myself, unaware of it. And you would think, Robin, I cannot believe. Yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm not superhuman. And the closer that people are to you, <clears throat> you know, you just kind of tolerate it. And you know, let me tell you what, what you tolerate in time, you will decorate. Woo, where do we see that in scripture? Oh, we see it in Matthew 12 where the strong man, once he's out from your members, he will come back into the house to see if it's been decorated or, or swept clean, which I explain in Mindfulness Mind of Christ in chapter seven, where I almost do all of Matthew 12, where decorate means the world <coughs> and swept clean means to drag in. And so what that means is to drag in the world. And where you are in the midst of continually tolerating people speaking indirectly about you in a negative fashion, I am telling you the world is creeping into your members. And as long as you sit there and you just ignore it and keep on, now there is an issue with, that we are to turn the other cheek. We're to love. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that you're supposed to stay in the midst of those who are thinking that way and talking that way to you and de let, letting those words and those opinions decorate your house. Get them out. Throw them out. Clean your house out. Just like the banging on the wall. Thank God I had it dealt with. I put in a maintenance request. I called land management. And let me tell you what. I had three people contacting me. Thank you, Jesus. Because they love me and they want. They love Rich and I being there. And who knows, they might love me as well. <laughs> they might love me as well. Because you know what? I am lovable and so are you. And so they contacted me and they said, you know, you are the most awesome tenants. We just wish everybody could be like you. And I've been here almost, Rich and I have been here almost seven years. And we have, this has been my absolute favorite place to live because the people are actually nice around downtown Birmingham where sometimes in the church, I just don't, I, people are just not nice. Just like I'm talking about where people just talk indirectly about you to you. 
And so, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit just popped to my ears. And, you know, it grieved me. And I am, I am struggling. I am struggling. There are so many times I want to cry. I want to weep. But God is good. God is good. And I know that there is a purpose. And God is going to cause this to work to my good. Just like he's going to cause it to work to your good. Amen. And so this is what God started telling me. He said, Robin... Just as those patches helped detox you, you didn't like the symptoms at first. You didn't like the headaches. You didn't like the kind of achiness, right? Just like with keto. When I started keto, same thing. Keto flu, detox. And so, you know what? I didn't get off keto. I didn't say, forget this. You know what? I wrote it out. I wrote it out. And some of y'all are being detoxed of the symptoms of the enemy's lies through different relationships where people are trying to decorate your house and tell you who you are indirectly. And you're sitting there, sitting there and letting them decorate your house, put paintings up, put, give you pots, give you pictures, and you're taking it in and you're taking it into your house. And God says, no more. No more. Oh my goodness. So the Holy Spirit, about a month ago, when things came to the surface where I had been vexed and I was being made out like I was just crazy. And this is what hurt most of all is that I was actually hearing God and it was being denied of what I was feeling where I felt like people were talking about me. And it was, oh no, Robin. We're not, no, there's no talking about you. The God exposed it and it slipped. It came out. But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus. I knew that I wasn't going crazy. I knew that I was hearing God. <clears throat> and God snapped my ears as he just kind of woke me up, so to speak, and said, do you know what you're placating to, Robin? And I said, okay, God, speak more. He said, they have spoken this about you that I brought up indirectly about you to your face. They have spoken this indirectly about you to your face. They have done this. They have done this. They have done this. He said, do you not see how they see you? Do you not see how they see you? And you are placating to them because you love them and you want their approval. And he said, get away. Get away because that is not who you are and it is limiting the call on your life and you have got to get to a safe space and turn your head and no matter what they say, no matter how they act and no matter how grieved you are and how painful it is, you have got to get away from this because you are succumbing to it. Oh my goodness, saints. Woo. Detox. So in this grief process where my heart has been hurt and thoughts come into my mind, oh, maybe I need to do this. Maybe. No, you're detoxing. You're getting it out. And I think about people that are detoxing in general. And like I mentioned, glutathione, we're on the glutathione patch. And we've been taking NAC <clears throat> and glycine. And eventually there's a massive testimony. Y'all don't know something that we have been rich and i've been dealing with for a long time and god would not let me release it for a long time and when the praise report comes which it will i cannot wait to share it with you because it's going to be a massive praise report and it's going to blow your mind <clears throat> and so taking the glutathione patch i've been detoxing as well as rich rich not so much as me and people that are on the other patches detox because it's just when your body starts healing listen you cannot heal and go through the healing process without detoxing first and so I was experiencing headaches nausea <clears throat> and I just looked up glutathione detox symptoms and I had some of the symptoms 
And so I've got other clients that have experienced detox symptoms. And you know, I just tell them <clears throat> it's detox, just write it out. And you know, it's different for everybody. Some, it might be hours, some, it might be days, some, it might be weeks. Thank goodness mine was only about five to six days, somewhere they're in. And so I had to detox and saints, when the Holy Spirit is waking you up, and I think about the belly and the nausea I felt, and remember my testimony that I shared about the spirit of fear, and how in 2005, when I left the house and I was driving to the gym and I just turned around the block, all of a sudden it was like my body was turning on itself and I, I became weak, I couldn't drive and my hands became palsied. And I was trying to open up the flip phone to call Rich to tell him that I was dying. I didn't know what was happening to me. I never felt this way. And then all of a sudden, out of my mouth, like 10 miles an hour, comes a glob the size of the palm of my hand that looks like a jellyfish. 10 miles an hour. And I have the gag reflex, probably worse than any of y'all ever have, believe me. I could not wipe the boys' noses. One time I did caregiving for an elderly lady and stuff came out of her nose. And I gagged for months, if not years later, thinking about it. And so the first thing that happens when that thing lands in my hand, my left hand, I'm pulled off the side of the road. That thing comes out 10 miles an hour. It's like a clear, huge glob, the size of my palm, almost like a baseball. And it looks like a jellyfish. I kid you not. <clears throat> and then I feel the Holy Spirit filling me with power. And I felt like I could run a marathon. Every time I've gotten supernatural deliverances with God, after those deliverances, I would always feel like I could run a marathon. And so God delivered me. He said, Robin, 1 John 4, 18, perfect love drives out fear. He said that was if you're a man. And so I think about the nausea that I've been experiencing from detox and how that nausea is the fear of man that I was unaware that I was placating to and how the headaches are like those thoughts that had been in my members that God is removing. And I think about some of you, you don't realize God is opening your ears to detox of unhealthy uh, <clears throat> fellowships that you've tolerated, you've been in the midst of, and he's wanting to pull you out because you're placating to the fear of man and you're allowing them to decorate your house with negative viewpoints of who they think you are. And understand this is not about you. It is about them because Holy Spirit taught me a long time ago when I was going through massive persecution in early 2000, 2003 to 2011. In early 2000, as Holy Spirit gave me warnings and dreams, God showed me, he said, Robin, people see what they want to see. They see what is inside of them and they project it onto you. They see what they want to see. Luke 6, 42, the log in their eye. And so I'm telling you saints, amen, Andrea, amen, Dina, and I see other people. I'm telling you saints, it is painful. You know, detoxing is not something you just go, woo, I feel good. No, you don't feel good. Just like I feel sad, I wanna cry, I feel heartbroken. And then those memories come back to me of how they think about me and how they've indirectly talked about me to my face in a group about negative things about myself and how I've allowed it to limit me. Ooh, not anymore. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So saints, go through the detox. It's okay. It is 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> where it's being burned out of your members. And I think about toxins and how it's, and it's hey, how you need antioxidants how you need that Ruach, that breath of Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. So Saint Judas detox and you go through it, ride it out. <clears throat> it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to, you know, be in a space of, oh, did I, 
Should I do this? Should I do that? No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Listen, if I was detoxing and I didn't like it, and I would say, hold on, let me get by these guys. They're really loud. Let me trot. Y'all get to see me trotting with the phone. <clears throat> let me walk. I'm almost through. Hold on. Okay, now how would it be if I didn't like the detox and I say, you know, I should just stop this detox. I should, should, just, should just stop the patches because I don't. That would be crazy. No. <laughs> detox. Go through it. Go through the emotions. Go through the thoughts. It's all right. But in the end, keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on the Word and how Jesus reflects who you are to, by the Father's heart. And that, 2 Corinthians 3.18, as you behold with an unveiled face the Word of God, as in a mirror, the reflection of the image of the Word of God, you are being transformed into that image from one degree of splendor to another as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? So you just hold on, detox of unhealthy decorations and decorate yourself in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you.